Hey, welcome back to Divine Biology. So this is actually the part two video for our Form 5 Chapter 4 revision. So if you missed part one, which is 4.1, vascular tissue, okay, I'll put it right here. You can go and check it out first. So for 4.2, right, okay, transport of water and mineral. So this is basically uh, explaining how water is transported in the xylem of the plant. No? Right, so for transport of water, right, it's actually broken down into three processes here, as you can see, root pressure, capillary reaction, and transpiration pool. And each of these processes right, occurs in the roots, stem, and the leaves, respectively. So in each part of the plant, you have different processes that occur in the xylem to help transport the water up. Yeah, so of course, we will start from roots first. Lah, right? So it is from the So, roots, right? Okay, let me draw the root structure first. So root, let's say it's like this. Here's the soil lah, outside. The xylem is actually inside, in the center of the roots. So the first thing you have to explain here right, is how the water from the soil can muscle the roots and then muscle the xylem, then go upwards. So, so here, by the way, for this part, right, Question usually like to ask root, split into two parts to ask that. Like, usually roots, right? They will ask one individual question. Explain how water is transported from soil into the xylem of roots, just like I told you just now. Right? So first point, right, they say here, soil is usually hypotonic towards the root hair cells because mineral ions are actively pumped into the roots. So first, right, soil, usually we say it's hypotonic compared to the roots. Hypertonic, you all should know, right? Is it really, right? Means you have more water. More water, less water. So water always go from more to less, hypo to hyper. So water can easily come in. The reason being because, right, in the, in the roots, right, they keep on actively pumping mineral ions, means salt into here. So since there's a lot of salt going to your roots, so your roots bring your water potential will be lower because too much salt. That's why it also will be hypo, so water can come in. Now, what you're going to explain here is, right, you can see to reach the xylem, there are four layers of tissue you have to pass through. Epidermis, cortex, endodermis, parasitical. So we can remember these tissues as the ESAP. It's going to pass through ESAP. So first, right, water from the soil will enter something called the root hair cell, which is actually part of the epidermis. Epidermis means like the skin of the root. So on the skin, you have the hair on top. So that's why the first process here we will say water, when it's hypotonic early, right? Water then diffuse into the root hair cells and then the epidermis. Because as we just only say, root hair cell epidermis, they are the same layer, they are the first layer. So basically, right now, I have water inside my root hair and epidermis already. So right now, if you compare the epidermis and the context, right? Obviously, epidermis got more water because it just received water. Ma. So, epidermis now will be hypotonic towards the cortex. And then water will come inside here. Lo. And when water comes into cortex, cortex and hypotonic to endodermis. And then water just keeps going in and in and in like that. But you don't have to keep on repeating, oh, now cortex, hypo to endo, endo, hypo to parasitical, don't have. So, this part, right, we will lump it into one sentence and explain. So, right now, you will say this. Okay, just now, soil hypo to root hair cell, water go to root hair cell. Now, root hair cell hypertonic, we will say towards adjacent cell. Adjacent cell means the cell, the cell besides it. So the epidermis now is hypo towards all these cells. So we will say water then continuously diffuse into cortex, endodermis, parasitical. Ah, for, so for the second part, you don't have to go, layer, go explain layer by layer. Just say, I hypotonic to all these cells, the adjacent cell, then I go into the long cortex, and do the means parasitical. So you have to mention the names here. Now, as water enters like this, right, it's just like inside a pipe, right? When water starts to flow, right, it will keep on pushing the water towards the end of the pipe. So here also the same, when water being pushed inside here, right, suddenly you have like a pressure that continuously push the water here non-stop. So this pressure is called root pressure. So that's the process that happens here. Lor. Once you have water being going in layer by layer, then suddenly you have a pressure that continuously push it into the xylem and then go up. Lor. Because down here is dead end one. Ma. So it's slow, so it is to some shit. So root pressure is generated and push water into the xylem vessels of the root, then step. 
Okay, so that's how the water from the soil go into roots, then slowly come up here. Now, once the water reach here, leh, the root pressure, punya pressure, is not strong enough to push the water all the way up to the leaf. So therefore, now you rely on two processes in the stem and the leaves to help pull the water up now. So just now we push, now we need to pull. So usually, roots and uh, leaves, right, they also will ask, a separate question. So right now they will say, explain the process that occur to transport water from stem to leaf. So just know the water from roots reach the stem already. Now how the water go up? Right, so we start from the stem first. So in stem, right, there are two forces you could explain regarding water, cohesive force and adhesive force. So look at the first one here. They say, Xyl in xylem of stem, water adheres to one another. Adheres means ichi, stick together, the water stick together by a force called cohesive force. So cohesive force meaning is the ability of two same molecule to attach to each other. Liang molecule the nung lead to nin zai ichi. So water actually has strong cohesive force and water can stick to each other very well. As you can see here. So it's just like inside a bottle, let's say you have a bottle lah. Okay, it's not a bottle, a bottle lah. The water you see inside the bottle, right, is all stick together one you don't see water molecule inside the bottle bg by bg ili ili the ma you see water is all stick together one right you see water is like this so all in one block together one just like the water in the bottle you see water is all stick together one you don't see water as individual molecules ili ili them yeah that's because of cohesive force and number two water also have very strong Adhesive force. So adhesive force is here. Water also adheres to xylem wall. Means that the xylem the wall by adhesive force. So adhesive force is the ability of two different molecules to attach to each other. Adhesive force is two different molecules to attach to each other. Okay. So right now you can see, I also stick to the xylem wall over here. So that is called adhesive force. Okay. Let me just draw an example here. Then it will be easier to. Picture it. So let's see here is the xylem. So inside the xylem, right, water molecules adhere to one another by cohesive force. So inside the xylem, right, the water is like a pearl necklace and it's like a like a chain like that. But one stick to another like that, like a chain. Okay. And number two, adhesive force means the water also stick to the xylem wall. So these two forces, right? Number one, right? Prevent the water from flowing down. Because inside xylem, it's not like a pipe at your house. Don't have to pump to pump the water up. So inside xylem, right, the water might be pulled down by gravity. So to prevent that from happening, I stick to the wall. And number two, I stick one to another, means I form like a continuous tube of water. From it from the roots to the leaves. Yeah, so that's why they say here, these two forces, right? We will say these two forces, they combine to form something called capillary action. So capillary action help to form a continuous column of water from roots to leaf. Tarang sui from ithiao lian, shi the lian from roots to leaf. Okay, so the water can easily flow up lo. So how to remember cohesive and adhesive, right? Okay, you just remember uh, dog punya name, Coco. So Coco means same, same. And then the other one, adhesive, same, different. So water actually also have very good adhesive. Water also can stick to other surface very well. Right? Uh, for example, imagine right, okay, your left hand is dry, your right hand is wet. Imagine a table very dusty, very dirty. If you put your wet hand and dry hand on a table, obviously the wet hand got more dust stick to it because water got adhesive force, they can stick to other substances very well. Right, then, uh, here they didn't really mention like how the water flow up, because this relates to this one. Yeah, in C, they say in leaves, when transpiration occurs, so you all remember, right, in leaves, you have a lot of these holes on the leaves called stomata, right? And then stomata is whereby water evaporates. So this process is called transpiration. So look at here. 
when water come out from the stoma right since we say water is like chain so when water come out it will pull this entire chain of water so how we lie stem it will pull the water from the stem to the leaf and that's how the water then can go up can be pulled up so to explain this we say in leaves when transpiration occur now transpiration then you got one mark a pulling force is created to pull water up from the xylem. So here's your first point. You mention pooling force, pool water, second point. And of course, you must mention the process. So this process known as transpiration pool. So three marks here, plus the four points here, cohesive, adhesive, capillary reaction, continuous column of water, seven marks total here. Lor. Maximum they ask is seven. Okay, there are also a uh, small possibility that they might ask you to explain whole thing one shot means from roots to leaf from soil to roots to stem to leaf usually that would be around 10 marks oh. but here you obviously you can see you got more than 10 points so it shouldn't be a problem to get 10 marks ah. okay done so that's how we explain capillary action transpiration pool these two actually is one package right? because capillary action doesn't really say how the water go up but capillary action helps transpiration pool to occur because right if no continuous column of water right your transpiration pool here, you pull your water, you pull, maybe you pull a few, then the rest cannot pull. So water must be able to stick to each other. So when you pull, you pull the whole thing up. Long. Next. One more thing here to go through. We have something you call C plus apple plus pathway. Now this is actually describing how the water right from the root hair cell there uh, can flow all the way into the xylem. So we are going back to the roots now. So there are two ways water can flow. So number one, simplus pathway. You just remember, simplus come from the word simple. So this pathway is very simple one. So if you look here, right, the simplest way to flow from here to here is just to go straight through every single cell like that. So that's simple. Though. What happens here is you go through the cytoplasm of every cell. Ah, so water moves through the cytoplasm. The second pathway is slightly more complicated. So the name also slightly more complicated. It's called apple plus pathway. So what happened here is they say water moves through between cellulose fibers of cell wall. So you're going in between the walls. So therefore, right, since you're going in between the walls, right, you've got to follow the arrangement of the cell. Uh, so the wall go where you have to follow the wall twist and turn. So how to be your ma fun, right? It's so like inconvenient you have twist and turn according to the wall so you're going in between the cell wall and however right uh ah, very complicated right the name so the process is so very complicated so you can see right until endodermis only apoplast can take place so once i reach the endodermis right there's this purple color strip over here called casparian strip casparian strip as they say here is not permeable to water has a put whole suite that is waterproof Okay, so once the water reach the endodermis, right, you can see. See, this is waterproof, right? It blocks the water from entering. So therefore, now the water have to enter the cell. It's like suddenly you go roadblock here, you have to turn to somewhere else. So then, then from here, right, you continue with Simplast pathway. So Apoplast can only undergo to endodermis. Once you reach endodermis, you continue with Simplast and then only can go into the xylem. So as you see here already, apoplast can only occur until, sorry spelling mistake, endodermis, because the cell wall in the endodermis got caspirin strip waterproof. So therefore, I will continue with simplus. Okay, so in roots, water can flow two methods. So what will question ask here is, of course, they will ask you to identify which is simplus, which is apoplast. So you see, pass through the cell like that is simple simplus. Yeah, the one is called apoplast. Apoplast is flow through cellulose fiber of cell wall and simplus is flow through the cytoplasm. Okay, and that will be our form 4 revision of 4.2 setup. So as always, if you have any questions, you always can ask in the comment section or you also can DM my Instagram, David Biology. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.